And I thank you that he just infiltrates each and every one of our lives. I thank you that he permeates our entire being, Father God. And I thank you that he just fills this room right now. I thank you that you just usher in your tangible presence, Father God, and fill this place. And we leave here changed, Father God. I thank you that we cannot leave here the same because of the word that is spoken today and because of your presence that is here. And Father God, I thank you that for those that are hurting, for those that are in need, Father God, those needs are met and the pain is healed, Father God. And I thank you for that in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah.
Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's the time to worship. Amen. Always time to worship. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Let's go ahead and praise his name. Lift his name, church. Let me hear you. I got earbuds in, so I need you to speak up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now is the time to worship. Come, and now is the time to give your heart. Come, just as you are to worship. Come, just as you are before your God. Now is the time to worship. Come. Now is the time to give your heart. Come. Just as you are to worship. Come. Just as you are before your God. One day every tongue will confess you are God. One day every knee will bow. Still the greatest treasure remains for those who gladly choose you now. And one day every tongue will confess you are God. One day every knee will bow. Still the greatest treasure remains for those who gladly choose you now. Now is the time to worship. Come. Now is the time to give your heart. Come. Just as you are to worship. Come. Just as you are before your God. One day every tongue will confess you are God. One day every knee will bow. Still the greatest treasure remains for those who gladly choose you now. And one day every tongue will confess you are God. One day every knee will bow. Still the greatest treasure remains for those who gladly choose you now. You know, we find security in, in Jesus, amen? We find a security in God's hands, amen? Amen, hallelujah. And that's, that's where our hope is, that's where our strength is, that's where our peace is. And we so many times try to find that in so many different areas, and it always leads us empty. It always, it always leads to an empty, empty heart, amen? But Jesus is the only, only place you're gonna find true security, true peace, and true love, amen? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Stay. 
You'll never let me go So close, I believe You're holding me now In your hand, I belong You'll never let me go You gave your life in your endless love. You set me free and showed the way. Now I everything hallelujah it's gonna be right there at your side waiting for you to just turn to him waiting for you to believe in him waiting for you to trust in him amen hallelujah hallelujah
personal Savior. Glory to God. Amen. We, give back, we magnify his name and give him praise. Hallelujah. He is worthy of all honor and adoration. Glory to God. Amen. Greet somebody. Tell them you're glad to see him this morning. Hallelujah. Tell them the name of Jesus is above every name. Hallelujah. You know, we have got, we have got, we have got to get back into our own place because we could just sit there and do that all day. <laughs> Amen. Just keep right on singing about Jesus. But doggone, we got to get out of here at a certain time and close everything up. So, all righty. So I apologize. I would like to just keep going. But um, while we're here, we, we have to operate within the parameters of what we got. Amen. But that's, that's going to change. Amen. Soon and very soon. Amen. All right, a couple announcements. Um, last Sunday this month, we're having our uh, summer uh, fellowship at Gibson Park, shelter number uno, one, hallelujah. And uh, so uh, make sure you sign up. There's a sign-up sheet out there on the table. Oh, actually, Jeff's got it in his hand right now. There's two. two. One out there and one here. All right. And uh, the church is going to provide the burgers and the dogs. We're going to provide everything else. Yeah, better, Brother Jeff wants to come make a quick announcement. All right. All right. Praise the Lord, everybody. Who likes to eat? Cap likes that. Put it in a cooler with rock salt in it. Lord have mercy. Makes it colder. Amen. Amen. Yeah. There's, not, there's nothing better. I mean, you get a watermelon, put it in the ice chest, put rock salt on top of that ice, then cut that watermelon open. That's so cold. Nothing about hurt your teeth. It's so cold. Mm. Get some cantaloupe, cut that baby up, throw some salt on there. Whew. Oh, yeah. And that scripture comes to mind, but be ye being filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen, amen, amen. Well, praise God. Good. So that's on the last Sunday of the month. And then the Saturday before that, we're having our uh, one-day, all-day VBS here at the community center. And uh, so you want to bring, get some, find some kids and bring them out. Uh, but do let us know, please. Let us know that you're bringing somebody. We, we kind of need to prepare with like the kind of a pre-registration. It ain't going to cost you anything. We just need to know they're coming. Amen. We don't need to have... Um, you know, 60 kids show up, and nobody told us anybody was coming. And we prepared for four. You know? Well, we got four hot dogs, guys. Split it up. Now, that's not going to work, all right? Anyway, uh, that's on that, that Sunday. All down from 10 to 4 here. Uh, all those that will be helping us out, we're going to actually we get in here at 930. We, we reserve for 930, then 430 uh, on that day for setup and cleanup time, all right? So uh, bring your kids. Bring the neighbor's kids. Bring some kids. Get, you know. Get some people saved and bring them. Hallelujah. Glory to God. All right. Uh, so that's going on. And then um, let's see if there's anything else happening. Is there anything else happening? Anybody know of anything else happening that I missed upcoming? All right. 
Don't forget. What's that? Yep. That's right. My wife and I are celebrating our 37th anniversary this week. On Thursday, it'll be, a th be 37 years. Oh, th that the best y'all can do? Thank you. I felt like I had just left and got translocated to the first church of the Frozen Chosen. Oh, my goodness. Hallelujah. Yeah. So our, our, our 37th anniversary is, is Thursday, so we're going we're gonna to go on a little trip here in the week, uh, during the week and uh, celebrate glory to God. 37 years of marriage, four years of dating, 41 years together. Yeah. Three wonderful children. And five adopted. Who are the five adopted kids? Oh, the, the whole Gill family is my our adopted kids. Now, Jeff's son, I need you to come over to the house, take out the garbage while I'm gone. All righty. Anyway, so yes, Cap is preaching Wednesday night. Hallelujah. And so come out and support that. I t told you I was going to take some time off this summer on the Wednesday nights, uh, which I haven't done, but, you know, we missed one. Um, couldn't have one because of July 4th, Cap. So I'm, I might take a couple more off before, before the uh, school year starts back. So praise the Lord. Anyway, come out Wednesday night. Don't, don't stay home. And, you know, it's warm. It's hot. It's air conditioned down here. You can come, you can come in here. It's air conditioned. Matter, matter of fact, it gets so cold. I got people complaining about how cold it is. Glory to God. All right. Well, it's time to give. you an know, offering envelope, please raise your hand. The ushers will be glad to assist you. If you're sending electronically, you're going to use your square cash or um, the square app, or if you're going to send, use PayPal, go ahead and do that. Uh, anybody need an envelope? Uh, glory to God. I think I saw some people filling some out. Some people get them in advance. Hallelujah. And then we got a lot of people now just, it's, it's electronic. I, you know, we, we come into church and it's going bzz, 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 bzz. You know, well, praise the Lord for that. We'll take, we'll take whatever uh, is most convenient for you. Hallelujah. Amen. We appreciate it. All right. But when we pray, we're praying over that, which was sent electronically, which was brought here today in um, uh, cash or check form. We, we still are going to pray over that. Glory to God. Y'all ready? Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the tithe and offering that's been brought into the storehouse of God. We thank you that people are blessed in accordance with your word. We thank you that windows of heaven are opened up unto them, and you pour out on them blessings they don't have room enough to receive. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Go ahead, Brother Joe, and receive that into the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Uh, while he's doing that, the reminder that we, we really need to be praying and looking and seeking uh, about direction, about moving into something permanent again. Hallelujah. Um, I know and we, we are kind of at that place we need to, you know, we, we got settled. We got, had to move out of the other place. We got settled, but we now need to grow, and we need to move into a place that, that will facilitate that. And uh, at the same time, we have to believe God for the money because it would be an increase of finances um, to do that. So uh, we need to be kind of gearing that, not just stay settled here. Or it's, it's comfortable. It, it's great. We got, I'm glad we got a permanent location that we can meet in on a regular basis, although it's not a permanent setup for us. If you're here at uh, 10 o'clock, you know that. It's a, it's a setup breakdown, setup breakdown, setup breakdown. And... Uh, you know, and then there's no, there's, there's a lot of things that we're, we're being hindered on. Um, uh, extracurricular activity. We, we try to make it work as best we can. Special meetings. Um, anytime we do something extra, we, we got we to pay more money just to do something extra. Uh, like vacation Bible school, we got to spend money to do vacation Bible school. We want to bring in a guest speaker. We got to spend more money just to give, be able to have a place to meet for the guest speaker. And in, in, Certain cases, we'd have to break up and sit down every time, to get, you know, for every service. Um, you know, that was, could be joyous in a three- or four-day service. All right. Praise the Lord. So we're looking, believing, got to move forward. Amen? So that we can do that. Um, well, I did say we are receiving a special offering today. I forgot about that. For uh, Vacation Bible School, okay, to offset the cost of, you know, supplies and food and all that kind of stuff. Uh, we have the rental that's being taken care of. Uh, we got uh, food to take care of. We got supplies to take care of. Um, you know, all that stuff goes into it. You know, we're buying. We're going to feed them lunch. We're going to give them snacks. That co that costs money. And so, if you want to uh, uh, offering envelope for that, brother Joe, <laughs> you got it. All right, cash out there. If you need an offering envelope for this special offering, um, please raise your hand. Anything extra. 
that goes in, that comes in beyond what we need. Go, we'll just put it into the general fund and use it for things we need for the church. All right. So if we you know if we get a hundred dollars extra, we'll just we'll put it back in the church. Okay. Glory to God. Uh, we might you know, put it toward the the new piano or something like that. I mean, you know, we'll do it toward something, but for the church. All right. All right. Actually, we're gonna fly me and my Jane. If it's enough money, me and Jane are gonna fly to Hawaii. You know, and attend a conference on, on how to flow in the Holy Ghost. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yeah, glory to God. Father, in Jesus' name, bless the people that give a special offering to help for our vacation Bible school to reach children, to reach our community. We thank you for blessing them abundantly. In Jesus' name, amen. I will go ahead and receive that into the kingdom of God, ushers, and uh, be blessed. Glory to God. Amen. And uh, Children's Church Preschool, you guys are dismissed. The rest of you, open your Bibles up, if you will, to the first book of John. The first book of John. Uh, the, uh, the beloved apostle, beloved disciple. And we're going to move into uh, 1 John chapter 5. There's more I want to read. I want, I and mean, we'll come back to this. And another thing. Um, Getting our um, place, we'll be able to start our services on time. Because they could come and practice. I mean, practicing is an issue. Being able to get together and practice is an issue. Um, there's really nowhere they have to either go drive to Dick's place. Or, you know, uh, there's just, you know, and, and then you got to bring stuff, set it up, practice, and then, you know, do all that. And it's not the same as having everything set up the way you always use it. Okay? So it's, there's just a lot of reasons it's time for us to really be getting our faith out there as a congregation, as a group, as, a part, as our local body of Christ, to believe God to move into a, a, a new home that's permanent, that we have all the time, okay? That, we, you know, that we, can, we can say, all right, we're having this special event tonight, and everybody comes out, all right? Praise the Lord. Look at 1 John chapter 5 now. This whole theme here, we, we, I was going to read 1 John 3, 23 through, through John 5, 5, but... Um, Time abates us, and we're not, we're not going to be able to do that. So I'm going to kind of jump in here, and, and uh, we'll come back and get that later. J verse 1, Whosoever believeth that Jesus is, uh, Jesus is the Christ, is born of God, that everyone that loveth him, that begat, loveth him also, that is begotten of him. <laughs> yeah, tell some Facebook folks, folks that. I went to church on Sunday and got my shout on, and then they about cussing people out because they don't like their politics on Monday. I, I got some friends uh, from the past that I, I'll tell you, I'll be real honest with you. I, I just, I had to mm, bite my tongue. You know, and I don't, I don't get on there and fight. I'm not going to fight on Facebook over your politics. Okay? You know, uh, bless your heart. Got your shout on on Sunday and, you know, and, and, and um, you know, Trump is the Antichrist embodied on Monday. You know, what do we call him president? Call him 45. Now, let me say something here. The other side was calling, you know, the other one 44. Okay. See, we've gotten ugly. We've gotten, it's gotten ugly. What? The spirit world has gotten into the church. We're going to have to get back to being like Christ. It's politics when they remember that. Is it lawful to give uh, uh, tribute to Caesar? He said, show me a coin. He said, who is this one? They said, Caesar. He said, the Caesars, what are Caesars? And the God of God. They can trip him up. They, they tried to get him involved. He wouldn't do it. He just doubted them. By this, so that we love the children of God when we love God. <clears throat> and This is the next verse. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments and his commandments not grievous. Whatsoever is born of God have come of the world, this is the tree that have come of the world. Eat our faith, our church's name. Hallelujah. Who is he that have ever come of the world, but he that believeth that Jesus is the son of God. Now, we have... Um, We've come to a state in the church where we, we live on narratives, okay? We, we live on, 
People, people get a narrative that sells lots of books, gets lots, gets lots of tapes, series old, gets some popular, gets big means, uh, this kind of stuff. Everybody on the planet has to run around. And if you don't preach that message, nobody will come to your church. Okay? You've got to rename your church to the newest narrative. And um, if, if, you just, if you don't preach that exactly that, they won't talk to you. All right? They mention the word repent on Facebook and see what happens to you in our circles. I mean, you'll, you'll, you'll get uh, filet mignon. I mean, they'll take you to the cleaners, man, you know, and, and not in love. They'll defriend you. Yeah. The only commandment is love. What part of it are you not walking in? Okay? So he says here, this is the love of God that we keep his commandments. Now, one of the narratives we have in the body of Christ today is that the only commandment is to love. That is the only commandment. Now, I want to um, uh, share a couple of things with you. I, I meant to look this one up, and I, and I, I didn't get it looked up before I, I came up because I kind of get, was getting more stuff before I came up. Um, Jesus said, think not that I have come to do away with the law. Now, I don't care who you quote, who wrote a book or whatever. Jesus said, think not that I came to do If you can find that for me. Walking concordance, I appreciate it. Hallelujah. Praise Or sitting concordance, whichever one you are right now. Uh, and he's, he's deferred to the wife right now. All right. Okay, she got the computer. <laughs> Think not that I've come to do away with the law, but to fulfill it. Now, um, there, there's, we're going to have to kind of take this thing and dissect it a little bit and, and go with this to kind of put this together. Uh, Not there, not there yet. All right. Look over, if you will, into um, Luke. What happened? My notes didn't. What? Huh? Destroy. Okay. Luke, um, Matthew 5. Look down in Matthew 5, if you will. Jesus comes, and, yeah, I mean, listen, the Jews were zealous of the law. They were zealous of keeping it and that kind of thing, and, they, and, and, and in one sense, rightfully so, because if they didn't keep it, they didn't uphold it, they didn't do those things, they got in trouble. Then Jesus is going to come, and he's going to show us another way, but in the process of that, he's saying, don't think that I have come. Think not that I have come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to full feel here in uh, Matthew 5, 17. Um, for, heaven, for, for verily I say unto you that till heaven and earth pass one jot or tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these, of, of these least commandments and shall teach men so shall be called least in the kingdom of God. <clears throat> and whosoever... Um, so ever shall do and teach them the same shall be called great in the kingdom of God. Now, Jesus is, now let me, let me kind of tell you what Jesus is really saying here. It's going to be fulfilled. Now, we know that uh, somebody, the, the lawyers and, and, and doctors of the law um, tried to trip Jesus up all the time. And over in uh, Mark's gospel in the 12th chapter, and down in verse 28, it says, and one of the scribes came and heard him reason, heard them reasoning together, and perceiving that he had answered them well, asked him, which is the first commandment of all? Now, he didn't say the only commandment of all. He said the foremost or first commandment. Foremost, it would, the margin says the foremost, okay? And Jesus answered, said, the first or the foremost of all commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, and, thy, with, and with all thy strength. And this is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, that thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. He didn't say there was no other commandment. Are you here? 
He said there's, there's no other commandment greater than these. And um, so we have Jesus saying, I didn't come to destroy the law. The law, remember Paul wrote in Galatians and said that the law was given as a schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. Amen? And we didn't need the schoolmaster. In other words, we didn't need the, the regiments and the ordinances. <clears throat> if you can't eat, you can't do this, you can't do that. All those things were there to show us how we were supposed to live. What God demanded of people. You know, thou shalt not commit adultery. I mean, you know, when Jesus came, it made it even worse. Jesus didn't come and say, I'm bringing you grace. And you can look at her, you can have adultery, you can do all you want to do, and it's okay because you're under grace. He said, man, if you look at her, the lust after her, you committed adultery already. That's what Jesus said. He didn't say it was okay to do it. You were under grace. It didn't matter. He said, just looking at her. <clears throat> he said, you know, the, the word, the law says, if you, if you commit adultery, you know, da-da-da-da-da. But I'm telling you, if you look at her, to lust after her, you committed it. He didn't lower the bar. He raised it. Now, there's a reason he raised it. Because in the new birth and the life of God in us, the empowering of the Holy Ghost, we were empowered to live what the law could not produce in us. So Jesus did not come to do away with the law or to destroy the law. He came to fulfill it and to empower us to do it, to fulfill all that it commands. Now, not in the cardinal ordinances and washings. That's what, those were all things that were symbolic. Those were symbolic statutes and rules. But the moral code of God that is in the law was, was, is still God's moral code. And the narrative that says, because God loves us, all we got to do is just love. Some people say it, and it turns my stomach the way they say it. Because it's not really talking about the love of God. It's talking about catering to your flesh, you know, and, you know, giving somebody a sloppy agape hug at church, and that's love. Well, the Bible says, John said, that the love of God is we keep his commandments. <clears throat> now, this is not we're living under the law to get to heaven. But if you love God, you're going to keep his commandments. If you love God, you're going to do what he wants you to do. If you love God, hello, you're going to live the way he wants you to live. This is not a, this is not a, a matter of because we got born again, we got put under the grace of God, that you know, everything is automatically happens to us. We're just going to you know, do everything we want to do, and God doesn't care. No, God still cares. The good thing is that when he commanded you, he now empowers you. You still got to work with him. Hello? I'll be honest with you. If, if it was, everything was automatic, the people say it's automatic, we wouldn't need the Bible. We would have, we would have one, one line after, you know, the Gospels. Now that you're saved, you're under grace, see you in heaven. Because grace is going to make you do everything right. It doesn't work that way. Now, the grace of God is there to empower you. And the grace of God is there to, you know, I'll tell you, let me give you a grace of God. You want to give you one? He ever liveth to make intercession for you. You see, even when you're out there, you're, you're messing up or whatever, he's praying for you. Jesus, the master, is praying for you. I remember one time where, he, you know, he came to uh, Peter and, uh, <clears throat> you know, said this before, before, um, before he denied him. He said, I've prayed for thee, Peter, that after thou art converted, you'll strengthen the brethren. Now, everybody knew what he was going to do. He told him, you'll deny me three times before the night's over. But I've prayed for you. That's grace. I'm telling you, that's just flat-out grace. He's praying for you, knowing what you get me. Knowing you get me to do something you're supposed to do. And in this case, treacherous. Hello? Denying he even knew him. Not once, not twice, but three times. And yet, he prayed for him, that he would be converted and strengthen the brethren. Amen? And so let's, let's kind of jump. Um, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm kind of looking for the right runway. 
Go over to John chapter 21. So we know that it can't mean... Now, people say this. They'll quote Galatians. We're no longer under the law. Okay? We're not, we don't go back under the law. But if Jesus didn't come to destroy the law, and we're not under the law, Jesus said, I didn't come to destroy the law, but I'm, I'm here to fulfill it. Amen. Then there must be something that was being conveyed we're missing in our teachings. Now, let me say this. You out there watching by, by Facebook, by live, whatever, in, whatever we're going out on now, we're going on a bunch of different social medias. We have to live our lives studying the Word of God with, with the leading of the Holy Spirit. We have to stop studying the Bible with a narrative. What I mean by that is trying to prove that what we heard that we liked is true. You have to be willing to have what you like challenged by the Word and it stand it. Stand the tempering and the trying of the word of God before you can walk in it. In other words, you come up with something, you know, uh, some people read stuff that God's not willing that any should perish. And they go out and start preaching universalism that everybody's going to be saved. But that won't stand up with the rest of the scriptures. And so we have to temper or allow the word of God to come against or come and judge or come and, you know, align itself with what we're believing and we accept however it falls. Amen? So if it falls on the side that you're wrong, you're wrong. But yeah, we got people, instead of doing that, they start taking stuff out of the Bible. Well, that's not really Bible. Or they, they got people running, got, got so off with some of this extreme uh, narratives on grace, they start saying that James shouldn't have been in the Bible because he disagreed with Paul. Because James says stuff that didn't line up with their narrative. That's dangerous, folks. Okay? So, now when we come to this idea, and we get a lot of people doing this, you know, all we got to do is love each other. Well, you take a thing, this, you know, the, you know, this is his commandment, they would love one another. John, John says stuff like that. But then you got Paul saying other things, Jesus saying other things. There's not a single commandment that's the only commandment the only thing we do that's all there is there's nothing else there's this one commandment and we don't have to do anything else that's just not true and if we had time we can go through the bible with a concordance we can go through the bible throughout the whole whole new testament and prove you wrong if you believe that there's too much scripture i said it's too much john said this is the love of god that we keep his commandments there's more than one Hello? There's more than one. The, Jesus, said, uh, Jesus says in one place, if you love me, keep my commandments. If you love me. And I, we, got, we got, I mean, listen, we got, um, we got so many scriptures that, you know, make your head spin. Okay? John 14, 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. Uh, John 14, 21, uh, he that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he is he that loveth me. John 15, 10, if you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love. Verse 14, um, you are my friends if you do whatever I commanded you. 2 John, verse 6, and this is love that we should walk after his commandments. This is the commandment that as you heard from the beginning, you should walk in it. All right? It's all, it's all through the New Testament like that. There's, you know, so in other words, if you love God, you're going to keep God's moral code. Bottom line. Now, let's go. I want to look at something here, and we're going to have to kind of get into this and get out of this real quick. Let's go to John 21. Look down here in verse 15 or so. They've been out. You know, remember, Peter goes fishing. Jesus comes out there on the shore. He says, y'all catch anything? They said, no. He said, catch me down on the other side. They got a great, great draw of fish. And then they realize it's Jesus. And he says, come on, guys. Bring the fish you got. He's got, he got a fire going. Got some fish on there. Bring some, you know, they're going to eat. After that, now this, this is the third time Jesus appeared to them, but in the, in the previous times, there's been nothing said between Jesus and Peter about Peter denying him. Nothing's been said. It's kind of the white elephant in the room. Y'all know what I'm talking about? It's the 500-pound canary in the room. And everybody knows he did it. 
Jesus, Peter denied the Lord three times. But he went out and wept bitterly. But he still, there still hasn't been any discussion between Jesus and Peter about this thing. All right? I mean, we're just kind of sitting here with this thing kind of out there. How many, how many have ever noticed that when there's something that's happened between people and it never gets addressed, there's always something there? It's just hanging there. Now, most people just try to act like it didn't happen. And that's what Peter's doing. Kind of like, what? <laughs> Cats? How, how, how did we go from the, the white elephant in the room to that? Thank you, Jeff. I'm going to try to get back on task now. Uh, Confucius said he smelt it, dealt it. All right, there you go. We better stop or we're just going to be lost here. <laughs> now I know how Moses felt. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. And so Jesus comes, he gives them to eat. And then when they had dined, Jesus is going to get rid of the white elephant. Jesus says to Simon Peter, Simon, not, not Peter, not the rock, not the boulder, not the strong one, but Simon, his given name, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these. Now remember, when Jesus was talking about those that would deny him, Peter adamantly said, though everyone else uh, flee or everyone else do whatever, I won't. Yeah, yeah, Peter, open mouth and shirt foot. I mean, Peter's like, you know, yeah, uh, I, I love you more than everybody because, you know, I'm not going to betray you. I'm not going to leave you. I'm not going to, I mean, some little girl made him cuss and everything. And Jesus said, Simon Barjona, or Simon, son of Jonas, which is Barjona, which is the son of Jonas, lovest thou more than these? Now, he uses the Greek word agape here sold out the love of God, the unconditional love. Peter answered and said, Yea, Lord, thou knowest I phileo thee. I love you with a family love, a brotherly love, a camaraderie. Okay? He said, feed my lambs. Now, Jesus is, you know, Jesus is going to get this thing out of the way. Do you love me? Do you love me? Now, now, do you love me unconditionally? Are you sold out? He said to him the second time, now notice that Peter did not respond to the question of Jesus fully. Jesus said, Son of Barjona, or Son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? And Peter says, you know, you know everything. You know I love you. He didn't even address the more than these thing. He left that part out. It was, it was a point of contention with him in his heart. Why? Because he had, he had boldly declared he wouldn't, he would not deny. He, I mean, they might all leave, but I'm not. He, 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 he jumped ship. Hello? And so Jesus comes back the second time and goes, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He doesn't address it again. Let's it drop. He said, Peter says, he saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my sheep. Now again, agape and phileo. Jesus is trying to get him to see a different level of the love he's looking for. And Peter doesn't get it. He's not there yet. Remember, Jesus said, I pray for thee after you're converted, you'll, you'll strengthen the brethren. He's not there yet. Folks, there's a lot of us that get to places in, in our walk with God or in places that we, are, that we are like Peter. 
we're, we're back over here where we shouldn't be. We've done stuff we shouldn't have done. And then we get in the presence of God. We don't even want to be there. And then when he asks us questions, we, we come up with some, we, we're, we're coming in a lesser level of commitment. We, we're afraid we will get burned or we, we didn't, we failed before, whatever. But Jesus is saying, do you love me with the unconditional God kind of love? Do you love me with that love? Agape. And Peter comes back and goes, you know then I have a brotherly love, a family love for you. Jesus said, well, feed my sheep. Now, Jesus is telling me, if, 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 you, if you do this, then go do something. See, one of the narratives we have in the church today is that if God loves you and you love him, that's all it is. You don't need to do anything else. Jesus said, if you do, go do this. Don't tell me he won't tell you to do stuff if you're born again, and you, you, walk, you want to walk after him, he's going to tell you to go do stuff. Okay? He saith unto him the third time, Simon, phileo thou's me. In other words, Jesus drops it down. Peter's not there yet. Okay, you don't have a sold out, un, un, unhinged commitment to me. But do you just at least have that brotherly kind of love? And, he, and Peter was grieved because he was, he was asking the third time, lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things you know that I, again, phileo thee. Jesus said, feed my sheep. And verily, verily, I say unto you that when you were young, thou girdest thyself and walkest whether thou wouldest. But when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thy hands. Another shall gird thee and carry thee whether thou wouldest not go. This spake he, um, signifying by what death he should glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he saith unto him, follow me. Now, Jesus is trying to bring him back. But the question keeps coming, the first two times is, do you have an uncompromised, the love of God, the, the, the un, the, um, uh, no, atta no attachments, you know, unconditional love for me? Peter said, you know I have a camaraderie love for you, a family love for you. And Jesus said, well, if you do, then feed my sheep. Twice, and then finally he comes back because Peter is, is not getting that agape thing. And he says, well, the phileo. And Peter says, and grie he's grieved, you know. How many more times are you going to ask me the same stupid question? That's why he's grieved. He's getting tired of answering the same question. You know I do. <clears throat> we got people teaching stuff that, you know, God knows we love him. He knows our heart. That's all that matters. And Peter told the Lord three times, you know I love you. Three times. And each time the Lord said, feed my sheep. Do what I told you to do. That's what he's saying. Do what I told you to do. If you love me. Now, Peter will get a hold of agape eventually. Okay? But right now, he ain't getting it. We've got a lot of people say, I love the Lord. And, and really, they're in that phileo stage. Because they're not in that unconditional place yet. That's okay. Because the Lord's praying for you. And the Lord's giving you direction even in that place. Amen? He's saying, okay, at that place, feed my sheep. At that place, do what I'm asking you to do. Keep my commandments. Do what I'm asking you to do. The other's going to get there. Amen? Wow, because he's praying for you. And then Romans 5, 5 says, the love of God has been shed abroad in the heart by the Holy Ghost. Amen. I noticed, I, I, I did a little more study, um, you know, the Greek word agape. Now, we do know that the Old Testament Septuagint is the Greek translation of the Hebrew Chaldean scriptures. Okay? And so that's how we do a lot of word studies and, and finding out the meaning of words or getting the significance of words, how Greek words took on a, a religious meaning, um, uh, took on scriptural meaning and that kind of thing. And the, the interpretation from classical Greek is shifted because of how it was used to translate a Hebrew words. Now, the Old Testament was written primarily in Hebrew, some Chaldean. All right? Um, 
And then, of course, the New Testament was written in, um, in Greek. There's a little bit of Aramaic in there, all right? Um, so, but, you know, primarily this, this, this is this what we have. And so when they, when they came up with the Septuagint, because, you know, Rome would conquer the world, basically what we call the known world, um, they, they, everybody was, the common language for everybody was, was Greek, you, you know, uh, for everybody. So <clears throat> in order to reach everybody, they, 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 tran- they decided to translate the, all the Old Testament scriptures into Greek. And that is referred to as the Septuagint. And so they would take a Hebrew word, and they would go and look at the different Greek words, and they would match that Greek word to that. And so we understand that a lot of the meaning of these Greek words are flavored by what the Hebrew word meant. Okay? Or the Hebrew word would change the classical use of the Greek word, agape being one of them. Uh, it, did, it didn't carry the significance it did. Now, very interesting that throughout all the Old Testament, I mean, and, and there's so many scriptures in there. I, do, I, could, I, could read, I could just sit and read them, and it's the same thing over and over and over. Love the Lord your God. 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 I mean, I just, I, I just ran the list, and there's just boom, 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 boom. Your, your head starts spinning. There's so many of them. The interesting thing is that agape is always used when commanding us to love the Lord your God. In the Septuagint, agape was used to translate the Hebrew word. I forgot. I started a some some word I can't I can't pronounce. Um, but each time where it talks about love the Lord your God, agape is used in the Septuagint. God wants us to love Him unconditionally. Now Jesus said, "I came not to destroy the law, but to fulfill it." that one jot nor tittle shall pass away until all is fulfilled, okay? We, we begin to get a picture that in, in the, the first, the foremost commandment, not the only commandment, and then the second, it's like it, the second of the, of the foremost. Didn't say they're the only two of the, in the world. Then you got people who go in here and jump over in a different place in the Bible and pull something out, take the phraseology there, and then that's the only, that's it. This is the only commandment. You can't, you can't. If you put them together, you can't come up with that idea. So what do they do? They leave it out. It's like telling a story and you leave out the part you don't want anybody to know about. Anybody ever done that? You're gonna tell a story and and one part makes you look bad, so that part gets left out. Yeah, you know how to fight. Well, he called me a blankety blank, 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 and I punched him. Yeah, but you forgot about the part, or you left out the part where you called him a blankety blank, blank, blank first. Right? It's amazing how when people start telling stories about what went down in a fight or whatever, how the, the part that puts them in the bad light or puts them in possible, uh, um, uh, you know, po- causability or whatever um, gets left out. Yeah, we call it his story. His story, not our story. So, um, we do this with the Bible a lot of times. When we come across things that don't work for what we want, we'll just leave that part out. And see, you can't do that. And so when you take a scripture, you know, the, you, know this, you come up, this is the only commandment. The only commandment there is is we love. No, that's the first and foremost. And Jesus says in another place, he said, you know, love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, your strength, your neighbor, yourself. Well, this hinge all the law and the prophets. And I'm kind of paraphrasing a little bit, so. But all the, all the law and the prophets are founded on love. Didn't say that we didn't need the, anything else. It just says that they're based on that. That's the, that's the underlying thing is love, the love of God. So I will not in any way, shape, or form deny the value, the supremacy, the importance of the love of God, of loving the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, your strength, your neighbor as yourself. And let me say this. If you're doing that, then you're probably not going to be stealing from them. You're not going to be committing adultery with your neighbor's wife or husband. Amen? Amen? You're not going to be using God's name in vain if you love him with all your heart, your soul, your strength. Amen? That's why the law and the prophets are based or hinged upon that. Amen? Because 
if you love the way that the Word of God teaches us or that Jesus taught us to love, you're not going to do things that by God's Word says not to do. The Bible even talks about in one place, it said, you know, he that committed fornication sinneth against his own body. Somebody said the other day on Facebook, you know, they said, there's only one sin, that's denying, you know, denying Jesus as Lord. That's the only sin there is in the Bible. Well, Paul wrote about sins, all kinds of sins. Hello? Call things the works of the flesh. All kinds of stuff. There's still sin. Now, so if you, if you love your neighbor as yourself, that means you love yourself, you won't sin against yourself. So love becomes the ultimate or the foremost, but it's not the only commandment. <clears throat> because what happens is when we do that and we leave things like that, then people run off the deep end and they start coming up with some crazy stuff. They get cray-cray. You ever seen cray-cray Christians? We used to call them charismatics. We were cray-cray. Have you ever heard the term cruisematics? See, back in the day, we didn't, we, didn't believe in, we didn't believe in church government, church authority, church anything. We just went to whatever special beat was going on wherever it was. That's, that's, that was our church, whoever had the best speaker in town. Who's your pastor? I don't have a pastor. I don't believe in pastors. Oh. Okay. Well, that's awesome. Glad you don't. Jesus does. So, Jesus is talking to Peter and going, do you love me? You know I love you. Well, then feed my sheep. Simon, do you love me? Do you agape me? You know what? You know I love you. Then feed my sheep. He understands he didn't get it, so he's going to drop it down. Hey, do, do you do you? Do you like me? Do you care for me? Do you? I'm like a family member. I'm like your big brother. Do you love me? Yeah. I, why does you keep asking me? Of course I do. Then feed my sheep. Our walk with God is based on a relationship of love. If we love God, we will keep his commandments. Now, that's not talking about, because we, we do know that the, the, the carnal, remember, Hebrews refers to all these sacrifices and the carnal ordinances. Can't walk so many miles on the Sabbath. You can't do this on the Sabbath. That's all, that, that's not the moral code of God. Okay? Those are, those are, those are statutes and ordinances of, um, uh, of just flat-out obedience. But there are moral codes. Hello? You know, when you look at the Ten Commandments, that's the top ten. There's 3,000 there. 2,990 are left out. Okay? But the top ten. You know, Dave Letterman did not start that. <laughs> Moses had that way before Letterman did. All right? You know, love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, and your strength, your neighbor as yourself. I mean, you don't take the Lord's name in vain. You know, don't don't uh, le uh, look on. You know, don't lust after your neighbor's wife. You know, don't look after the neighbor's things. Don't you know? Go on all these different things. It tells you in those top ten to not do. Keep remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. That kind of stuff. We are in a Sabbath. We're in the sabbatical rest of faith. He has entered into faith. Has entered into rest. Okay. Um. So, but, but, the, but the commandments of, you know, washing your hands, take, you know, washing your feet, um, you know, not walking more than a mile on the Sabbath. Um, how many went anywhere yesterday? How many went anywhere that yesterday? Lawbreakers. Because yesterday was the Sabbath. The New Testament does not refer to Sunday as the Sabbath. It refers to it as the Lord's Day. Now, a lot of Christians just transferred the rules of the Sabbath on good Sunday because it was the Lord's Day. Yesterday was the Sabbath. No way around it. Saturday is the Sabbath of Old Testament teaching. But he's not, that's not the commandments, he's kind of commandments he's talking about keeping or upholding. 
Like, don't eat certain foods. Rise, Peter, kill, and eat. What the Lord has cleansed, thou shalt not call unclean. You see? But the, but the moral codes of God, the things that, that, that are, are what God is concerned about and how you live and, and loving your neighbor and, and keeping things uh, pure and walking before God in the right way, those kind of things are the things God want, expects you to keep. Paul even writes, writes in some places, he says, you know, let no, no corrupt communication come out of your mouth. To hear some people talk, you say anything, you, you can cuss like a sailor, and that's okay because you're under grace. Well, I'm sorry. I'm not let corrupt communication come. I can live any way I want to live, yet the Bible says put off the old man and put on the new man. See, when I love God, I want to walk in the light of the new man, not in the old man. Hey, he can you get me out of that old man. Not old man like an age old, but the, the way that you used to live. And so Peter uh, struggles with it. But then we see this. Who's the first one that stumbles out of the upper room and preaches the first sermon of the church? Peter. Amen? I said amen. Glory to God. I mean, Peter was zealous for God. I mean, <clears throat> all the zeal he had about cutting the guy's ear off and then <coughs> <clears throat> he wasn't going to deny the Lord and all this kind of stuff. Then he did, but he got straightened out. He was, he was just, oh, that's wide open for Jesus. He got to the agape with God. But he wasn't there. So Jesus said, walk in the phileo where you are. Amen. But keep, do what I'm asking you to do. Keep what I ask you to keep. Live the way I've asked you to live, if you love me. Well, if, you know, you ever have a uh, husband and wife, or dating, but, you know, husband and wife? Well, if you love me, you'd do such and such. You would do such and such, you know. And we, we get that. Have you ever gotten that? The thing is, the Lord said, if you love me, do what I said you ask you to do. Now, a marriage relationship, a, 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 married, a relationship is not based on I love you and I'm not going to do anything. I, there's, you know, we talk about this word, commitment. Now, it's amazing if you're dating, you know, you're, 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 uh, the, your significant other. I hate that term, but, you know, your girlfriend or your boyfriend, you'll ask them, honey, would you do such and such? And you jump like a jack in the box to go do it. I mean, you're all over it like ugly on a monkey. Then you, you know, get married, get out your while, and you, you know, and, and, and you won't be you say, honey, you gonna do such and such? Yeah. Halftime. And then you forget. And then you get further on down the road and can't you do it? I'm doing something. Yeah. When you start doing that, come talk to me. I, I guess it's called job security for me. <laughs> I get to do counseling. You know? Now, when you're fervently in love, you'll continue to do. You know? I mean, you know, my wife will, you know, I'll, be up, I'll go upstairs or something, and she'll say, honey, before you lay down, will you, will you get me something? You know, she, she's sitting down on her computer doing something. She needs me to go get something. Do you always want to? I'll let you figure that one out. <laughs> but because you love them, you do it. I don't, I don't holler down the steps. What's your problem? Yeah, Jay, David, those would happen. <laughs> you hear the, you hear the uh, Cherokee war drums going off. <laughs> of course, now Cherokee say they don't have those kind of chants, but anyway. Yeah. When you love somebody, you'll want to honor them to do what pleases. Amen. When you agape them with the love of God, you'll sell out to make, it, make everything for them better, make their life better. You sell out to God to make his kingdom better. 
Amen. When you phileo, you know, your family, you know, you can, it's not quite as sold out. God wants you agape. He wants you saturated in agape. Agapeo and agape, uh, verb and noun. Okay. Not just a brotherly love, not just a family love. How many of you got, got relatives that you know? I love them because they're family. If they weren't family, I would spend time with them. Might not even give them the time of day. All right? But they're family. So I love them. I like spending time with them. I love them. Anybody got not like that in your family? Come on now. Fess up. Now, don't look at your family member and ask them, do I, or, am, am I that person in your life? <laughs> so we have here the love of God is not, as we said, we tried, we're trying to lay this groundwork here. <clears throat> this, you get loved. There's no action. There's no response. There's nothing on your end that's required because God loves you. Grace makes you prosper. Grace makes you um, go to heaven. Grace this, grace that, and there's nothing on your end that you're responsible for. It's just not biblical. Because the first commandment is to love him with all your heart, your soul, and your strength. And if you love him, You'll keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. If you love God, you want to honor God. Doesn't mean you'll always do it right, but you'll want to and you'll work towards it and you'll, you'll get it right when you don't. Yeah, repentance. One of my friends read it awesome thing on repentance yesterday and of course you know he gets flack from the people who don't believe in it oh well keep taking the flack brother it's, it was good stuff you know I, I said i'd been saying i was going to do a word study on it because i knew that repentance meant more than just change your mind and it does he covered all that with like some different concordances and, and, and commentaries and stuff and I went i was going to do that <laughs> but now i don't have to because he's got it all right there yeah, that's what I said. Thank you for bringing clarity. Because <laughs> repentance means a change of mind, and then it goes on to convey the thought of, uh, after, of, of actions and stuff afterwards right. that relate to that change of mind, not just a change of mind. See, that's, see, we get people who say, I became a Christian because I adopted the teachings of Christ. They never got born again. They thought it was a good way to live. Yeah, good more. You gotta be born again. Amen. All righty. All right. Praise God. Well, we're gonna finish right there because we got to get out of here. Praise the Lord. And um, we'll pick up next week and move along on this on this road. Glory to God. And uh, we are gonna get to you know talking about the love of God, uh, where God loves you. But we want to make sure you get a good understanding of where we're coming from. Now, remember, when Jesus came to start teaching on love, they were students of the law. And they know they have been commanded hundreds of times in Scripture to love the Lord your God, agape. They knew from Scripture that the, lo the loving God also incurred the responsibility of keeping his commandments. So in writing to that crowd, you're... The problem with the Western mind many times is we don't have the basis upon which these things were presented, the platform from which they were presented. Remember that the people Jesus preached to, even when they started going to the Gentiles, they would expound more. Okay? All right? But when, when Jesus preached the gospel, when these guys were formulating the doctrines of the church, they were, form, they were based on all they knew about the Old Testament and the, why? Well, because they kept quoting, as the Scripture says, as the Scripture says, as it is written. 
there was a reference to what they already had a basis of understanding of. So when they were told to love, they understood that love entailed loving. You know, that's why the Pharisee asked him. He's just trying to trip Jesus up, see if he could catch him or something. And he says, the first and foremost is the love of the Lord God to all your heart. And of course, that, that scribe comes back and says, well, you've well said. You've well said. You've well said. Basically, you're right. That's right. The foremost is the love of the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, and your strength, and your neighbor as yourself. When you live from that place. Are you here? The other things fall in the line of how you deal with things and how you do things. And remember this. Now, if you look over First John, it says something very interesting. It says, um, and this is the love of God that we keep his commandments. And it goes and says this, and his commandments are not grievous. Margin says burdensome. What God's asked you to do is not too difficult to do. Why? Because the grace of God has empowered you to keep his commandments. Amen? It's not that you don't have to do them. It's that you're empowered to do them. <clears throat> Amen. Father, we thank you for the word of God. We thank you for your love of Jesus. We thank you that we're going to walk in the light of your word all the days of our life in Jesus' name. Those of you watching today, if you don't know Jesus, we ask you to uh, give your heart to him, and you simply do that by asking, say, Jesus, I believe that you're God's son and that God's raised you from the dead. Come into my heart. I give myself to you. And then when you do that, tell somebody. You can call us or, or uh, email us, contact us through our website, uh, www.fbc.org, or you can call us at 336 852 or email office at fvc.org. Praise the Lord. We want you to know Jesus with all your heart. Come to him because he does love you and wants to make your life different. Until we meet again, remember this, that this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. God bless you until next time.